Hello there and uh, welcome back uh, to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be getting into a very interesting topic. This was a, a question that someone posed to me. Uh, they reached out to ask me if I would provide some information about the military buyback program and how that relates to federal employment. Uh, before we jump right into that, I want to say thank you uh, for those who are visiting and subscribing. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, to the channel so we can try to help those that uh, really need the assistance uh, in understanding how the federal government actually works. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, there are current federal employees that have served in the military. That time is not lost. Uh, what we can actually do is we can buy back that time towards our federal career. The federal government um, has a retirement system, and that's the federal employee retirement system. There are There is the CRS category, but you don't see many of those anymore. So we'll focus on the FERS system, if you will. Once you buy back um, or this program, you can start utilizing the benefits immediately, and we'll get into what the benefits are in a short video. Keep in mind that if you buy back your time from the military, you or attempt to at least buy back this time, it has to be paid for before you file for retirement. Generally, people will pay for the program up front, and we'll talk about how we actually do that. But first, we have to get into um, how we would actually get there. So uh, let, let's break that down so everybody understands what the steps are related to the, the buyback program. Okay, well, let's identify, and identify this. What do you really need to file in order to get this uh, program going? Well, the first thing you're gonna need is your DD-214. Your DD-214 is what you were issued when you left military service, and it kind of denotes the time that you served, really you served four years, six years, 10 years, 15 years, and you got this when you left the military. Now, you have to leave the military under two conditions. You either have to be honorable or general. Dishonorable discharge uh, does not get the benefit of this. Other than the DD-214, keep in mind, if you do not have your DD-214, you need to reach out to the National Personnel Records Center located in St. Louis, Missouri. I'll leave the address um, in the remarks section so that way you know where you can apply for it. The other form you're gonna need is IR-2097, and that form will basically just break down the branches of service, whether you served in one branch of service or multiple branches, but it will provide a timeline of where and when you served and when you left that branch of service. That is key to identifying, number one, how much you were making during that time because how they rate it is 3% of your pay is what you will actually buy back. Once that's completed, you would get a response back from from um, from Missouri indicating that okay here here's your completed timeline and and identify those dates verify the dates then you would generally submit that document to the defense financial uh, services DFAS and DFI, DFAS basically kind of provides a computation and a breakdown of how much you will actually pay back this amount is not a large amount at all it's based on uh, when you served, uh, obviously, and what that rate of pay will be. I've personally done it, and in my case, based on timeline, I paid back a little bit over $7,000 uh, to get 10 years of credit back. Once that's done, DFAS will provide you with SF Form 3108, and you will submit that to your HR, and your HR can start deducting it from your pay. Now this could be in a lump sum, um, or you can make month, monthly uh, installments as long as it's completed prior to your arrival, your retirements. Now I want to offer um, a very, very important note. Uh, once you have uh, completed the payback, uh, the buyback process, uh, th that document that you receive uh, from DFAS and the Office of Personnel Management. You need to keep this document in a safe place to include ensuring that HR uploads this document to your EOPF file. That becomes critically important because there have been some cases 
in federal government where employees have paid for the program, did not maintain their records. Um, somehow the federal government misplaced those documents, interestingly. And then all of a sudden, when the time comes for you to, to retire, somehow they don't know where that document is. But at least if you maintain it, you have proof of record, and now uh, you at least have a copy of it. It would really suck to, to basically buy back 10 years uh, of a program and then the federal government loses that program. So it behooves you to kind of maintain, maintain those documents. Also make sure that um, your other federal documents are in line uh, when you file your retirement assessment, but we'll get into that in another video. Now we're gonna get into what are some of the benefits of buying this program back. Uh, there's so many benefits, but I'm gonna home in on a couple of key benefits. Um, some benefits include um, increasing your sick time and your vacation time per pay period. Let me explain. So when you come in as a federal employee, you are actually receiving four hours of sick time and four hours of vacation time every pay period. That's just every federal employee. Now, once you buy back that time, after three years of collective service, what ends up happening is that four hours now becomes six hours of vacation time. Once you get after 15 years of service, that it goes from six to eight years of vacation time. Now, just imagine that you're receiving 16 hours of vacation time per month that accumulates uh, quite rapidly and you know you can only roll over 240 hours into the next year so you want to accumulate the time and take your leave and not utilize the time um, the other portion of this would be that time that you have bought back you tack it on to the end of your federal time because your military time and your federal time is all federal time and collectively you kind of use that as your retirement bridge. Generally speaking, that buyback time gets tacked on at the end of your federal service, but is utilized as a, a ongoing benefit. So there are a couple of categories of retirement that I need to mention um, to, to kind of put that into more context. So we have a couple of different categories. We have MRA plus 30, which is minimum retirement age plus your 30 years of federal service. That means you're getting 100% of your annuity based on the completion of your federal time, collectively with your military and federal time. Now, not everyone, um, health, mental state of mind, actually wanna work for the federal government for 30 years. Now, there are those that are quite happy to stay within your careers uh, from the conception to the conclusion but there are others that have different goals and dreams, but that's just a starting point. Um, the other category would be that someone would work, to, um, they came into the system at a later time, uh, later on in life, and now they're age 60, but they've only completed 20 years of federal service. That's admirable that uh, they have possibly have co completed two careers. Uh, that could be an example. Maybe someone have retired um, let's say from the military first, they completed one career there, they came over to the federal side and did a second career, and now they have two careers. Um, and we'll get into why um, if you have retired from military service, it is not beneficial to you, but we leave it out up to you. Now, if you come into federal government, even at a later date, um, you could basically be sick age 62 and get five years of federal service. That's all you require to retire. It'll be a relatively small pension, but you could receive a pension. The other major category would be MRA plus 10. Um, MRA plus a minimum retirement age plus 10 years. So for example, um, if you did 10 years of military service and now you came in and you have completed, let's say 20 or 25 years of federal service, we collectively combine that time. There are some issues to the MRA plus 10. Not everybody agrees with this, uh, including myself. If you've met the retirement age, as they, dis as they agree to, um, you're, you're talking that I'm gonna lose 5%. 
I'm gonna lose 5% of every year that uh, I do not work till 60. Example, so let's say I'm retiring at age 57. I'm missing that three years. I'm gonna be missing 15% of my pay for the rest, for the, to, once I receive my annuity because I decided to retire before age 60. The other thing that you also lose is something called the Social Security Supplement. The Social Security Supplement is not has, has nothing to do with Social Security. It is just a gauging point. So for example, they would actually look at your Social Security to see what you would actually receive at age 62, and they take that number, they cut it in half, and they will actually give you the supplement on top of your annuity, annuity to assist you until you hit 62. At age 62, that, annuit, that the supplement goes away, and you get your regular Social Security. Now, um, that will be dependent on your uh, financial status if you would want to do that. And there are many that actually do because we have military veterans that are receiving disability. They are receiving uh, a military annuity. So losing percentage, not knowing what those numbers are, may be insignificant. Now, the last area I'm going to cover is going to be, is it right for you? Only the employee can make that determination. Personally, I don't believe that um, things could be that drastic that you would want to take your military time, forfeit an annuity, and, and buy that time back uh, to federal service. It doesn't make any sense. So I, I want to be clear. I do not recommend, it's up to you, I do not recommend that you buy back your retirement annuity from the military. That is a means of income on a source of vehicle that you are utilizing for income to support you and your family. And the, and the federal government is just a secondary career. There's absolutely no reason why you should. There may be some instances where maybe you did not complete 20 years of service, but maybe you spent uh, 15 years in the military and you got medically retired. Still honorable uh, conditions. And now, um, maybe that annuity can be stretched out if you tack that time on the federal government. I recommend that you reach out to your HR specialists or generalists, uh, speak to a CPA, and kind of make that determination if that is a right move for you. Well, this is a very short video. I just want to kind of provide the basics. I hope you found the, the information here informative and it assists you with your uh, federal career. Although not inclusive, there are many factors to the military buyback program. If there are specific questions that you would like to discuss, uh, please leave them in the, in the comment area so that way I can respond to them and other subscribers and viewers can actually see that dialogue going back and forth. Well, again, thanks uh, for watching. Please don't hesitate to um, like, share, and subscribe, and please have a safe and enjoyable day.